Thanks for tuning in today to our first regularly scheduled uh, live streaming series that we're calling Leads Helpful Tips. The idea is that every week on Wednesday at around this time, around 1 p.m., we're going to have different topics that we're going to present on, whether it be about things about our products, for example, the LCF3 behind me. Sometimes we'll have things on our spectral vision system, on our Evo Finder system, just various topics dealing with our products, their use in crime labs, their use in forensics, and some helpful things, helpful tips and hints um, that help our customers use the products either more effectively, more comfortably, or just, you know, in general learning a bit more about the microscope. So our first uh, helpful tip that we're going to be doing today um, is going over diopter numbers and getting them dialed in on your comparison microscope. Just a couple quick points. So we're doing this through YouTube live streaming. One of the big benefits that we have by doing it through YouTube live streaming is we get a much higher quality video signal that can get out to everybody. Um, it will also record the entire live stream. So if you have friends or colleagues that couldn't make it for today's um, helpful tips, um, please feel free to share the exact same link that you're watching it on and, and they can view it at any point in time. So let's get started. So as you can see behind me, I have one of our uh, Leeds LCF3 comparison scopes. And one of the biggest topics that comes up when we're training or when we're working with firearm examiners is how to, how to get the eyepieces corrected for an individual examiner. Um, and what's really neat is we have on our microscope, we have these printed diopter numbers. And we'll zoom in in a moment so I can show you them. But this technique that we're going to do today really allows you to find exactly what your numbers are. Uh, and so you can dial them in. And when you have those numbers set, what will happen is when you zoom in and when you zoom out, the image will remain in focus. When you go to high power focus, go to low power, it will remain in focus. Uh, additionally, the crosshair, if you have a crosshair loaded into the microscope, if you know the exact number of your prescription, you can dial that in and then that crosshair will remain in focus. Um, but then also the dividing line will stay in focus too, which is a really nice thing. And instead of having like, is it in focus, is it out of focus, it can be really helpful just to, to have a sharp, crisp, good looking image. So the idea, the whole idea of this is kind of what I'm going to show here is that is you can zoom in, you can focus on something. Let's just go ahead and focus on some of the stria here. Um, also, I'm not a firearm examiner. I think I lined these OK, but don't judge me too harshly if I didn't. Um, but the whole idea is with diopter numbers set for your eyes, when you're looking through the microscope, what you see through the microscope is going to be the same as what you see on the camera. And then when you zoom in at a higher power that we're at now, and then when you zoom out, that image is going to remain in focus. Um, and also, you can see as I'm zooming out, with our microscope, we've, it's called, we call it parcentration, but essentially this, that stria remains aligned. So how do you do this? So the first thing I recommend doing is getting a flat business card, such as uh, one of my business cards. Um, and the reason we want to use something that's flat is there's not a lot of extra depth, so it's very clear what's going to be in focus and what's going to be not in focus. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my, my uh, bullet, and I'm going to put just my flat wax platen right onto the universal holder. And then what I'm going to do is mount up my business card directly on it. We're, what's neat about this parfagality technique is you don't need to do it for the right side and then do it for the left side. Really, you only need to do it once, and it's all, it's all about just finding what these numbers are. So we're going to put a business card. I'm just going to choose the right side, because that's the one that I've, that's nearest to me. And I'm going to switch entirely to one side of the microscope. My next step is I'm just going to orient it a little bit, put it by my name. My next step is to screw up my eyepieces, make them totally wrong. And the way you do this is you can, on this type of binocular head, you can pull the eyepieces out on one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. What you're going to do is just pull the eyepiece out, and you're going to unscrew the eyepiece. I mean, you could screw it all the way in, and that'd be fine. But what I prefer to do is to have it screwed all the way out 
because that gives me, a, when this eyepiece is inserted into the binocular, it gives me a bigger thing to hold on to so I can adjust it. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that out. The eyepiece on the left side of this binocular doesn't, it, you can pull the eyepiece out, but it doesn't have the focus adjustment directly on the eyepiece. So on this style of binocular, what I'm going to do is simply um, adjust it so it's all the way out, um, so they're the same. My next step is looking through the microscope. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to my maximum power. And you can kind of see on the monitor, um, what I've done is I've brought the image into focus so you can see those, those dots. And then what I'm going to do is make sure everything's in focus at high power. And now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. Uh, it looks OK on the monitor, but to your eyepieces, it's going to be totally, uh, totally different. It, you, it shouldn't be in focus at all. If it is, great. You found your diopter correction. It just so happens to be screwed all the way out. So now what we're going to do is one eye at a time, we're going to adjust the eyepiece, just the eyepiece, and bring it into focus. So with my right side of the microscope, I could just grab and rotate the whole thing. But what you'll sometimes find is as you grab the eyepiece, the eyepiece will freely spin. So what I like to do is just kind of grab the eyepiece and quickly and confidently adjust the image to bring it in focus. If you're having a hard time getting it in focus, what you can do is you can cover the, uh, the alternate eye. You can definitely do that. Um, I'm just using both eyes. What I do recommend doing, though, is, is leaving your eye open if you do cover it. Because what can happen is if you cover an eye or close an eye, your brain itself is going to try to adjust your eye's lens to bring the image into focus faster than what you can adjust here. And so it won't necessarily, this technique won't necessarily work the best. So then I'm going to do the same for my left eye, just to bring the image into focus. And that's the technique. So now what I'll do is I'll look at my diopter numbers. And you've probably noticed that I'm wearing my glasses. Um, you can do this technique with your glasses on. You can do this technique with your glasses off. If your glasses are on, your diopter and your prescription is current, your diopter numbers for the, for the microscope are probably going to be pretty close to zero. And so that's exactly what's happened here, is my right eye is just slightly negative to zero. And what you'll see is that they, these diopter numbers go up in whole steps. So it goes from 0, and this is a little negative sign, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And it goes in the other direction as well, so positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So my right eye is just a little shy, just a skosh uh, negative. And then my left eye, if uh, you can actually, I don't know if you can see it so well, but you have the diopter, you have a white index here, and your diopter number is printed on the, the side. My left eye is actually uh, negative 1. So a little, a little bit off from my glasses. Something I'll recommend doing is doing this t technique. You know, the first time you do it, you get your numbers, see how it looks. And then I would suggest working with that for a little bit and then trying this technique again. Because what will end up happening is you can see variability um, over your eyes and over these numbers day to day, hour to hour. But what you're going to find is that they're going to be around a region, a specific region. So with my glasses off, um, and when I do this technique, I know that I usually have a negative like one and a half for my left eye and a negative one for my right eye. And the big, the big advantage of, of doing this and getting these numbers dialed in is, um, like I said before, uh, is about, you know, when you zoom in, focus, when you zoom out, everything remains in focus. When you look through the microscope, look at the uh, camera, everything uh, agrees there. But it's also really helpful if you share microscopes. So for example, uh, if one of my colleagues, Kevin Aboulay, for example, was on the microscope, he would have wildly different diopter numbers than my diopter numbers, potentially. And so when he'd be looking at something and say, oh, hey, I found a, a potential match. I'd like to bring you over and have your input to see it. If I were to use his diopter numbers and just stand at the microscope, I could think, I could think Kevin doesn't know how to focus his microscope. And so I'd have to spend time refocusing. So getting those diopter numbers um, 
dialing them in and knowing them can be really helpful if you're moving on microscopes and moving off. It can also additionally be really helpful uh, for eye strain and eye fatigue. So the idea is that um, when you're sitting at the microscope with uncorrected diopter numbers, if you're on the wrong diopter numbers, your eyes are always fighting the microscope to try to force things into focus. Um, and that's where some examiners can get tension headaches and things like that. So yeah, hopefully this is helpful as you guys are using things. I'm gonna just load up my sample really quick and just kind of show you another cool thing. It's more of just when everything's working, when everything's cooking and is right on your microscope, it's just really nice because yeah, you can very easily uh, maneuver things around. And what's kind of neat with that is once your diopter numbers are set, if you find yourself kind of doing the focus dance in my in focus and my out of focus at low power, you can always just move up to a higher power than what you're at, adjust the focus, and then when you zoom out, the area that you're interested in is going to be in focus. That's the diopter technique. This was our helpful tip. I hope you guys find it helpful and useful as you're working in your casework. If you ever have questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, kind of a short live stream today, uh, but there's going to be more of them coming in the future. And if you guys run into anything or any questions, or you have requests for us to go into more in depth in these type of live streams, please feel free to let us know. That it, that's the extent of our live stream. Thanks again, Jake Kruth with Leeds.